Hello friends, this video on introduction to Euclid Geometry Part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Give a definition for each of this following term. Are these other terms that needs to be defined first? Are there other terms that need to be defined first? And why? What are they and how might you define them? You see parallel lines, perpendicular lines, lines again, radius of circle, and square. See parallel line. Lines that do not intersect. Let me write it. Lines that do not intersect with each other. With each other anywhere. Next is perpendicular line. Perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines, lines are which are per, uh, right angle to each other. Lines that are right angle to each other. For example, if you see this is the line, perpendicular lines. And these are parallel lines, they won't meet each other. Okay, this is line L, this is M, this is line L, this is line so Line segment. So line segment is a terminated line. Line segment. It is terminated line. So if I have a line actually has infinite length, right? So I terminate this as two point, fix the length, and this AB is the line segment. Radius of a circle. So if you see radius of a circle, that is nothing but this is the length of line segment that joins center of circle to any point in circle. This radius. That is radius. Square. Talk about square. Square is uh, all sides equal to the length. So you have a four figure like this. All sides equal in all the angles. That is square. All sides equal in all angle MP. Okay. And the question is, are these terms that needed any, are there any other terms that need to be defined? Yes. If you talk about parallel lines, you define what is lines, right? If you talk about line segment, you define what is line. If you talk about radius, you define what is uh, center of the circle, what is point, what is circumference of the circle. Square, again, you define what is uh, side, what is the angle. So we need to define other terms also, which we are not defined. The question is considered to postulate given uh, any two distinct point A and B, there is a third point C which is between A and B. The second postulate is there exist at least three points that are not on the same line. The question is do these postulate contain any undefined terms? Let's see. Given these two distinct points A and B, this point is not defined. There is this the third, the third point C, which is between A and B. So in this, if you see, point is not defined. Here, there exists a third, uh, at least three points. Again, here point is not defined, which are not in the same lines. Line is also not defined. So if you see, these are not defined. Okay, that is done. The undefined terms. The question is, are these postulates consistent? Let's see. The first is. Given any two distinct point A and B, there exists a third point C between them. 
okay fair enough the second one says that there exist at least three points that are not on the same line so there exist three points let's suppose a b d and they are not on the same line but if you see they are consistent okay they are consistent these are consistent they are not contradicting so one case we saying that there is a c point on this line the other case they are saying that there can be a point c that is not on the line right it can it can happen right it can happen it says that there exists a c which is on the line and it says that there exists a c which is not on the line so it is possible both are consistent do they follow from euclid's postulate they don't follow from euclid's postulate actually they follow from axioms they follow from euclid's axioms okay if a point c lies between point a and b such that ac is equal to bc prove that ac is equal to 1 by 2 ab so there are two points a e and b and there is a third point c is lying between these two points such that ac is equal to bc ac is equal to bc so we have to prove that ac is equal to 1 by 2ab see logically it looks so easy right so let's see that ac is equal to bc given okay both side let's add ac okay so we, because there is a postulate that equal added on both side are equal right i'm adding both side ac So AC plus AC is what two AC, and BC plus AC. See BC plus AC is what BC plus AC is AB. Why? Because BC plus AC, BC plus AC coincide with AB. Since they are coinciding again with the right, BC plus AC coincide. AB since it coincide AB, so as per uh, the postulates, they are equal. And for this, we are using the postulate. Added both sides. Now, if you see with this, I can say that AC is half of AB. Easily, easy. so we have used Euclid's axioms, postulates to prove this. Okay, prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint. Let's try to prove this that every line segment has only one uh, midpoint. So there is a line segment let's suppose AB, and let's assume there is a midpoint C, right? So we say that AC is nothing but half AB, where C is the midpoint. This is given. Let's assume there is another point D, and let's assume D is midpoint. Assume we have to prove that this is wrong. Right? B let D is another midpoint. Then in that case, AD will be equal to what half of AB. Correct? Because if AD is the midpoint of AB, okay, this is first equation. This is second equation. Now we see both these equations, both the equation, AC is equal to something, AD is equal to something, and that something is same. Half AB. Using the axiom from equation one and two, I can say that AC is equal to AD. If AC is equal to AD, that means what? C and D are same point, right? If AC is equal to AD, if this point is same, that means C and D also should coincide. That means C and D are same. If C and D are same, that I can say that my assumption that D is another midpoint is wrong. Because D is nothing but C, okay. That means every line has only one midpoint. Okay. If AC is equal to BD, prove that AB is equal to CD. In this case, let's see. AC is equal to BD. That is midpoint. Both have this point common BC. So we have to prove that AB is equal to CD. 
So if you see A, AC is equal to BD given and both has this BC common. Let's subtract BC from both. Okay, you can subtract equals from both. So AC minus BC, if you see this is AC, this is BC, what you get is AB. And BD, BD minus BC, what you get? CD. And thus we can say that AB is equal to CD. Pretty easy. Correct? Why is axiom 5 that is a whole is greater than part is considered as universal truth? It is considered universal truth because this is valid in any scenario. If you talk about apple also, if you take a half apple, if you take a full apple, the full apple is bigger than the half apple. If you take a pizza, it's a full pizza. If you take a partial pizza, right? So this one is bigger than this. This is universal truth for any, any scenario. This is true and that's why it's called universal truth. In a discipline, this too. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot.